Namaste. Well, it's a bracingly cool morning up here in the mountains and wakes you right up. <laughs> so it was a brilliant sunny day and it'll be nice later on. But anyway, I want to talk about consciousness and what consciousness is and how it forms. How does it come to be? Well, it depends on how you look at it. The materialists keep trying to make consciousness an effect of some material combinations. And, you know, it's just not going to happen <laughs> because consciousness is actually the cause of everything. And depending on your state of consciousness, that depends on what you see when you look at the world. Now, the Mandukya Upanishad says, from the highest level, from the level of Brahman, that the world doesn't exist at all. Consciousness also doesn't exist. So then, why is Brahman called Sat-Chit-Ananda? Chit means consciousness. Well, it's actually not consciousness. It's pure, objectless awareness. Brahman is totally self-aware. But Brahman is without change, without duality, without limits, without any relation to anything else, because for there to be something else, there has to be two or more. And that's duality. And Brahman is non-dual. So Brahman is a static. It's not related to anything else. It's complete in and of itself. And it knows itself. But not in the sense of consciousness where you have a seer and the seen and the act of seeing. So actually duality is triplicity. <laughs> you have the drik, the seer, the drishya, the seen, and the drishta, the act of seeing. So those three are found in all types of reality other than Brahman. So how do we get this triplicity out of the unity of Brahman? Well, it's through ignorance. Now, just like Brahman is beginningless, unborn, causeless, and eternal, so is ignorance. Why? Well, because everything has an opposite in duality. So when we look from the standpoint of duality, we see that Brahman also has a nemesis, which is called ignorance. Huh? Or to put it in the a theistic language, you have Shiva and you have Shakti. It's automatic. I use the example of a boat passing through the water. Or maybe a better example is a rock in a stream. The stream wants to flow downhill. And it's going to because that's the nature of water. But if there's a rock in the middle of the stream, we see that eddies, circular, spiral eddies form around the rock, and this is called turbulence or vortexes. Now, we have several videos on vortex theory uh, that show good examples of this, so I'm not going to go into it again in this video. But everything in the material world, from atoms to galaxies, is a vortex a circular 
spiral uh, inflow of energy. And when that arises out of Brahman, because there's nothing else for it to arise out of, <laughs> there's nothing else for it to be made of except Brahman. And Brahman is self-aware. So when Brahman becomes aware of itself in the form of a vortex, consciousness is created. Consciousness means a superimposition of this trinary relationship of seer, seen, and seeing. A superimposition on Brahman. Brahman is the substrate of objectless awareness. And then when this, this triplistic structure is superimposed on it, it becomes aware of itself as an object. And thus you have the drik, drishya, and drishta. So this is how consciousness comes to be. And because Brahman is the substrate of everything, consciousness is everywhere, from the, in the atom to the greatest galaxies or whatever is the biggest thing there is, the whole universe. Huh? So this is how consciousness comes to be. Now, if you ask the average person who is looking from the viewpoint of duality, uh, thinking that the material manifestation is real and so on, if you ask them, well, what is reality? Uh, it, for example, is this body real? Huh? They'll say, of course it's real. And you ask them to prove it. Why is it real? Because I can see it. Well, Advaita philosophy says just the opposite. If you can see it, if you can perceive it, it's not real. Why is that? Because to perceive something requires duality. The difference between the seer and the seen, the perceiver and the perceived, and the perception, the trinity. So, that means that anything you perceive is, by definition, unreal. And why is that? What is the proof of that? That it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. You know, the time is eternity. It has no beginning and no end. So, if we perceive something in the flow of time, that has a beginning and an end. Its period of existence is, is nothing, infinitesimal, compared to the span of eternity, because eternity is infinite by definition. That which is finite is infinitesimal compared to infinity. So, the vortex of consciousness on every level is simply illusion because it can only be conscious of things that have a beginning and an end. And that change, huh? change means something comes into existence in the beginning and then it goes out of existence at the end. And in the meantime, maybe it goes through different transformations like this body. This body is, is conceived as a zygote, an egg and a sperm. And then it develops into an embryo. And then the embryo is born and comes out in the world, grows up, produces some other byproducts, whether by work or by reproduction or however. And then it dwindles and disappears. So is this body real? No. It's not possible. And since it's not real, it cannot be the self. 
It cannot be who I am. It cannot be me because I am beyond it. I am perceiving it. So then by definition, according to Advaita philosophy, the body is unreal and the body is not self, which is what the Buddha was saying all along. This whole world is anicca, impermanent, dukkha, unsatisfactory or suffering, and anicca, sorry, anatta, not the self. To be perfectly satisfying, we require something that's eternal and perfect, perfectly satisfying, and is the self. Huh? In other words, nitya, sukha, and atma. So these things, these three qualities, are only in Brahman. When we realize Brahman, then we also realize all these other things. So then, what about the creation? What about the demigods and God and all that? Well, from the viewpoint of Advaita, the Ajatta state of consciousness, uh, the Ajatta Vada, the, the view from the point of non-duality. That's all unreal too. Because in the beginning, there was no God, there was no creation, there was no universe. It all came into existence at a certain point. Starting to sound familiar? <laughs> so it goes through so many changes, and then again it disappears. So it's unreal. And everything about it and everything within it is unreal. Including things like Vaikuntha and the higher lokas, Brahma loka, Jana loka, Tapa loka, now, all these higher planetary systems. What to speak of our own earthly planetary system. It's all unreal. So then, why are there so many scriptures that advise us to worship different gods? And why do we choose to focus on worship of Shakti and Shiva? And the answer is that these create pious karma, shubha karma, which is auspicious, which raises our consciousness which brings us to the point where we can cognize non-duality, which is just the opposite view from the common sense view that it's real because I can perceive it. Advaita says, if you can perceive it, it's definitely unreal. It's the snake Then the rope. The rope is real. The snake is an illusion. And so when we say that the material world doesn't exist, what we're saying is that the illusion of the material world as being real doesn't exist. Just like the, the snake in the rope doesn't exist. The only thing that exists temporarily is the delusion that the rope is a snake. And when that disappears, the snake is gone. It never was, actually. It was only our imagination. It was only our projection of our ignorance. You see? So the beginningless consciousness, Brahman, is covered by the beginningless ignorance. And because of that, so many vortexes are created from atomic size all the way up to galactic size. <laughs> and all of these entities have consciousness because they have awareness of things other than themselves. This is duality. This is illusion. This is maya, that which is not. 
And this, by overcoming this through knowledge, uh, not necessarily by mystical meditation or um, being zapped by some guru or some god or goddess or something, uh, but by knowledge, jnana, by knowing what the truth is, we can overcome it and we can realize Brahman. How do we realize Brahman? Simply by recognizing it. Because we all experience Brahman every single moment of our lives. Waking, dreaming, sleeping, enlightened or not, doesn't matter. Because we are Brahman. We're Brahman, but we're covered by ignorance. So we have three states of consciousness and one that's beyond, Turiya. And when we come to know these things, then we can see them. And by seeing them, we become free from the illusion of the temporary material existence. And that's enlightenment. That's liberation. That's satchitananda. That is the ultimate truth. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.